Hello, Michael Brown here, Senior Market Analyst at Caxton FX with this week's economic update. The market has sort of struggled to find and latch on to a narrative this week now that President Trump is out of hospital and seemingly on the mend from coronavirus. The market really is struggling to find anything that it can really latch on to, to either rally convincingly or to pull back and sell off convincingly. The same three factors continue to dominate things more broadly. The uh, negotiations or lack thereof over a stimulus package in the US, the upcoming presidential election, which is just 15 trading days away now, uh, and also Brexit and the future relationship between the UK and the EU. But there hasn't really been any market moving or significant developments on that front to leave a longer lasting impact on price action over the last five days or so. We did have uh, on the stimulus front a breakdown or a collapse in talks between the uh, the White House and the Democrats in the House on Tuesday. President Trump pulling the plug uh, in those negotiations through his favourite medium of Twitter. But then on Wednesday we had the President talking about perhaps cutting a piecemeal deal, uh, particularly around the areas of airline aid uh, and also around another round of $1,200 stimulus checks to the American people, the latter obviously being a bit of a vote winner in his eyes. Nevertheless, this is a proposal that we've heard before. Piecemeal deals uh, were being discussed and were rejected by the Democrats back in July. It's very, very difficult to see them being done this time around. But the market isn't too focused on the near term. Instead, the market is looking at, at least in terms of stimulus, the fact that some additional spending, be it a smaller increase under a second term uh, of a Trump presidency or a significantly larger increase uh, under a Biden presidency if it were to occur, the market is just focusing on the fact that some additional spending will be coming down the line eventually, perhaps as late as February of next year. And that seems to be giving market participants and investors enough reasoning to believe that they can jump on the reflation bandwagon for now and begin to price in higher treasury yields, higher equity market and a, and a weaker dollar as a result. Sticking with the US, the political situation is actually stabilising a little bit. I've said for quite a while now that the market is somewhat less concerned with who wins the presidential election and much more concerned with the question of whether when we wake up on the 4th of November, we know who the next president of the United States will be. Well, the market seems to be becoming less nervous about that. And I think that is because uh, former Vice President Joe Biden, the Democrat nominee, is pulling uh, increasingly ahead of President Trump, a CNN poll this week, for example, had Biden 16 points ahead of Trump. And while polls have a little bit of a patchy track record of late and, and weren't very reliable back in 2016, Biden is also pulling ahead in a number of the key swing states, those battlegrounds that he needs to win if he does want to, to make his way to the White House. So the fact that the market is becoming more confident that we will know the election outcome in very short order after the polls close is helping to, to put a bit of a floor under risk assets uh, at least this week and I think that will continue to be the case uh, as we go through. The prospect of additional fiscal sp stimulus and the fact that we are likely to know the election result in an orderly fashion are probably cushioning and insulating the market from the fact that a Biden administration and perhaps a Democrat sweep, uh, including the Democrats flipping the Senate, um, cushioning the fact that that would all increase uh, lead to higher taxes and tighter regulation. It, just an aside on the political side of things, the debates really do not matter. Uh, last week's presidential debate was a shouting match. This week's vice presidential debate was perhaps some of the most inconsequential television that you will see. Uh, and next week's presidential debate is uh, planning, they're planning for a virtual debate now, but President Trump saying he'd rather hold a campaign rally instead. So who knows whether we will even have any more debates. But given that a lot of US voters have already made up their mind, it's difficult to, to, to see what's happening with the debates actually having any impact on things at all. And then a little bit closer to home in terms of the political situation here in the UK. Well, negotiations between the UK and the EU uh, over a free trade agreement seem to be taking on much more of an optimistic tone, but it would not be nice to see this optimism uh, in the talks backed up with some action from both sides and some narrowing of the ground. Although it is pleasing to see that uh, there has been political intervention now, the Prime Minister speaking with the presidents of the EU Commission and the EU Council 
over the last seven days or so, political intervention needed because the two negotiating mandates as they are at the moment are simply incompatible with each other. Uh, if you get that political intervention, it can give some wiggle room and you may see those mandates change and a deal be done. I remain bullish on the chances of a deal getting done, around about 65-70% uh, sure that, that we will have a free trade agreement, a skinny free trade agreement, but a free trade agreement nonetheless uh, by the end of the year. Although Sterling at the moment seems to be ignoring all of this noise, all of these sources reports uh, and just kind of plodding along in the mid 129s against the dollar. I hope that update has been useful. Uh, if you would like to find out any more information, then please do head over to our website. As always, that is caxonfx.com business. Otherwise, I wish you a very good weekend and uh, I will speak to you next week. Goodbye for now.